Good morning. Welcome to worship at Grace Covenant Presbyterian Church. We are so glad that you are with us this morning on this beautiful day. There are a number of things happening in the life of the church, and so I want to call attention to a few things. For one, if you are following us um, online, on Zoom or Facebook, you may not be aware of the announcement link, and that you can find that um, online on our website page, but I think also Kim makes that available to you in, in other ways. But be sure and take a look at the announcements that go with our bulletin so that you know what's happening in the life of the church. Because despite the fact that we cannot worship in person, there is a lot happening in our congregation. I want to tell you about a few things today. One, I want to mention to you that the youth are, come, uh, the, are preparing for the Super Bowl of Caring. And so throughout the month of January, they are going to be collecting non-perishable items for harvesters. And that collection will take place all the way up to February 7th. And so what you can do is you can bring items to the church and drop them off during the KCK um, hot lunch drop-off time. So that's January 16th from 8.15 to 9.15. Or you can put them in the harvester's barrel that is going to be in front of the wooden doors at the church. So that's under the portico in front of the sanctuary from 9 a.m. to noon. So there are two ways that you can donate for harvesters and support the youth with the Super Bowl of Caring. So we hope you will participate in that. We know that the need is especially great right now. Also, the youth are going to be doing a really wonderful activity for MLK Weekend. They are taking the 90-minute uh, dividing line driving tour of the segregation in Kansas City. And so on the 17th, they are going to gather at 2 p.m. in cars at the Shawnee Mission East parking lot. The tour starts in the north lot of SME that enters on um, 75th Street. And we'll caravan in separate cars with people in your bubble. So we are going to keep this as safe as possible. Remember that drivers must be 25 years old for a church youth event. So this is a great opportunity for families to do this together. And if the 17th doesn't work for you, you can do it on your own anytime before January 18th. And there is a link in the bulletin that will help you to access the information about that. On January 18th at 2 p.m., the youth will be holding a youth Zoom meeting to discuss and debrief what they have learned about the tour. If you are interested in that tour and would like to go um, as an adult without any youth, we encourage you to do that. And if you are interested in having a conversation about that, um, contact Mitch or me at our email addresses. Other things happening in the life of the church. This morning after worship, there is the Matthew 25 Adult Sunday School class. The link has been in the bulletin newsletter and available, and I'm no doubt, because I know Kim by now, she's putting information in the Zoom link. So we invite you to join us for that at 1115 for conversation about what it means to be a Matthew 25 church. And then finally, today is our Epiphany Star Sunday. So from 11.15 this morning, out under the portico in front of the sanctuary doors, we have a wise man and a wise cracker, that's me, who will be passing out stars today. So if you would like to get your star, we encourage you to come and do that. We're going to hear a little bit more about those Epiphany Stars and think about ways that they can be powerful in our lives. So we really encourage you to do that. And again, be sure and take a look at all the announcements of the activities happening in the life of the church. There's one more I forgot to mention. There's a note in the announcements that there is not going to be Sunday school in January and that we are planning in-person Sunday school in February. That is not correct. Now, I think that must be a miscommunication. What? Is it youth? It's on the youth page. Okay. Don't misconstrue that because that's exactly what I did. That's the youth only. The children are still having their online classes at 9 o'clock for 2nd through 5th grade and online opportunities that are available through the Children's Facebook page. What? you got to speak. Oh, thank you. And Mitch is reminding me to have you send in your prayer requests. If you can send them in any time now on any joys and concerns that you would like to be praying about in the worship service, now is the time. We appreciate you sending those in so that we can incorporate you into our worship prayers. And now, after all of that activity, I invite you to take a deep breath 
to let go of all of the stresses of your week, whether they be stresses that have been national, local, personal. Set it aside for a moment, and let's give our hearts and our minds to worshiping God. Let us worship. God of grace, we open our hearts, minds, and souls to worship you today. Thank you that we dwell in your kingdom and live in your presence. Thank you that as we gather together, we join with all Christians across the world to glorify your holy name. Come, be with us and lead us in our time together. We ask all this in the beautiful name of Jesus. Amen. Well, since it is Star Sunday, and it's the first one for Stuart, we thought we'd uh, chat with him a little bit because I don't think he understands what's going on. Hello, Stuart. Are you here, buddy? Hi. Oh. <laughs> Good morning, Pastor Mitch. How are well, you today? Well, I'm doing pretty well. And yourself? Oh, I'm doing fine. Well, I have to tell you, we're giving out something special today. We're giving out Star Words, and I have a special one for you. What is a Star World? Well, it's a gift we give out during the season of Epiphany here at the church. And it's a time when we remember the wise men who traveled a really long distance to see the newborn Christ child. Oh, that sounds like a very long trip. It was. In fact, it took them almost two years. Oh, so Jesus was a toddler then? Yes, yes, Jesus was. Ooh, I wonder if Jesus had the terrible twos. Oh, I never thought, you know, I never thought about that. I suppose it's possible. But, well, let's get back to the wise men. They traveled all that way and they brought gifts with them to Jesus for gratitude for the gift God gave them. What gift did God give them? 
Well, let's put it this way. It was the baby Jesus also. That's where the word epiphany comes from, is it's a time when we recognize that God's at work. And sometimes, you ever seen that thing that people do called a face plant? Mm-hmm. You know, they do that, like, oh, I suddenly understand. Well, epiphany is kind of like that because it means we suddenly understand who God really is because of Jesus. Because God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. So, this is what's going on. This star word is a paper reminder that helped symbolize for you what God has been doing for you in your life. And so I hope you put it somewhere where you can see it every day and then take time to focus on it, pray over it, And if you do that, it's a practice that will help you kind of get an idea that the Holy Spirit might be whispering to you sometimes. What is my style word? Your word is kindness. So am I supposed to think about ways to be kind? Well, that's one thing you can do. But the fun thing about star words is they don't have just one meaning or one way of looking at them. You said you could think about ways you could be kind, but then you could also be thinking about the way people show kindness to you. Or I could look and see where people are showing kindness to each other. Absolutely. See, that's why star words are important to us here in our congregation, because they help us to see where God's at work in our lives and also help us to uh, see where we might be at work in the lives of other people, too. That sounds very special, Pastor Mitch. I will keep in my ears open and listen for what God wants me to teach, wants to teach me. You're speaking about as evenly as I am today. It's one of those days. <laughs> Boy, are you, it's been one of those weeks, hasn't it, Stuart? Oh, I... Well, I tell you what, I look forward to hearing what you learn, so let's take a moment to pray, and then I'll give you your star word. All right. God, we hope that you'll use these star words that we share with one another today to remind us that there are many things that happen in our life that you're involved in that we rarely recognize. That epiphany is a reminder to us that if we just open our eyes and our hearts to your work in this world, we'll have a great surprise coming for us to see how busy you are at work in our lives and in the lives of other people. We know this because of everything Jesus taught us and for the great gift of his life for us. Amen. Well, here you go, Stuart. Gotcha? All right. right. Well, thank you very much, much, Pastor Mitch. I'm going to find a special place for this right now. I bet you will, but uh, try and keep it away from the shortbread area because, you know, you get a little crumbs on it. Oh, I... (laughs) Okay, thank you, Stuart. Bye now. Bye. (laughs) (laughs) I invite you to join me in our Epiphany prayer, but before we begin, I want to just share with you one tidbit of information that may inform your prayer as we pray it. When you see the word word with a small w, we are talking about scripture. When you see the word W with a capital W, we are talking about Christ. With that in mind, I invite you to join in saying our epiphany prayer together. O God, God, you you spoke spoke your your word and and revealed revealed your your good good news in in Jesus Jesus the Christ. Christ. We We confess confess that we struggle to hear hear your word. We are afraid of the cost of following your word. The word challenges us to let go of our proud opinions, short-sightedness, and pompous wisdom. The word calls us to repent of our sin and our apathy. The word calls us to follow the light of love, just as the wise men followed the star that led to the Christ child. Forgive us when we do not have ears to hear your word and eyes to see your light. Guide us to follow where you lead. Fill all creation with your word again, so that by proclaiming your joyful promises, we may become one living body, your incarnate presence on the earth. Amen. The good news of the gospel is that Christ forgives us our sin when we come to God and confess them. And so friends know that in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And now may the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you and all others.
Our gospel lesson is from Matthew 2, verses 1 through 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the territory of Judea during the rule of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We've seen a star in the east and we've come to honor him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. He gathered all the chief priests and legal experts and asked them where the Christ was to be born. They said, In Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what the prophet wrote, You, Bethlehem, land of Judah, by no means are you the least among the rulers of Judah, because from you will come one who governs, who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and found out from them the time and when the star had first appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem saying, Go and search carefully for the child. When you have found him, report to me so that I too may go and honor him. When they heard the king, they went and looked and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them and still until it stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother, 
Falling to their knees, they honored him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Because they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they went back to their own country by another route. Holy wisdom, holy words. Thanks be to God.
This morning, we are celebrating the season of Advent. No, we're not. It's just been that kind of week, hasn't it? Oh my gosh. Well, stay with me. We're celebrating the season of Epiphany, which began on Wednesday, January 6th and continues through February 7th. Epiphany Day is a day that we celebrate the revelation of God's promise and God's purpose to the nations of the world. And so on Wednesday, I had planned in my head that I was going to set aside some time to reflect and consider and just be in the epiphany moment as I prepared for today. Well, that went out the window when the news of the storming of the U.S. Capitol building unfolded on the television. I sat in front of the TV, transfixed, like watching a accident that you can't turn away from, in shock and dismay at what was happening in Washington, D.C., but not only in Washington, D.C., at the state capitol in Kansas, at the state capitol in Missouri, and Washington State. I was uh, dumbfounded. And so on a day when I was planning to focus on the power of words and how they can transform us, I found myself feeling speechless this week. We witnessed an insurrection that none of us have ever seen before. The last time that something like this happened in our country was in 1814 when the British attacked the Capitol building. But Wednesday was the first time in the history of the United States that our Capitol building has been attacked by U.S. citizens. January 6, 2021 now has been named a dark day for democracy. There is so much that we could discuss about Wednesday's events, and in the days and the weeks ahead as we continue to learn more about what happened, conversations certainly will come. As of today, we know that more than 50 police officers were injured, 50 people were injured, 50 police officers, five people died, one was a police officer. It was indeed a dark day. But one of the things that has been sticking in my mind and my heart and weighing heavily is the fact that this riot was stormed by people carrying signs and flags and banners with messages that said things like, say yes to Jesus, Jesus 2020, in God we trust. There was someone who went to the Capitol building carrying an enormous cross. Rioters were heard to call on God to save the republic. Others chanted, shout if you love Jesus, shout if you love Trump. The events of Wednesday were a violent mob adorned with Christian symbols. Christian leaders from across the country have been dumbstruck. People from across the political and ideological spectrum have been speaking out. Jamar Tisby, who is a Christian author and speaker, wrote this week, Christians have a responsibility to speak up against this violent movement. Albert Moeller, who is the president of the Southern Baptist Seminary in Kentucky and in an influential voice in the Southern Baptist Convention, said, We are undoubtedly in an agonizing moment in which evangelical Christians who supported Donald Trump now find ourselves in the position of being tremendously embarrassed by this most recent behavior. Rick Warren The megachurch pastor and author from California wrote, Armed breaching of capital security behind a Confederate flag is anarchy, un-American, criminal treason, and domestic terrorism. President Trump must clearly tell his supporters, we lost. Go home now. Beth Moore, who is a well-known evangelical writer of Bible studies, tweeted, I don't know the Jesus some have paraded and waved around in the middle of this treachery today. They may be acting in the name of some other Jesus, but that's not the Jesus of the Gospels. I agree. That is not the Jesus of the Gospels. 
But there are those that, like generations before us, so desire that Jesus will come as a military leader, that Jesus desires and requires that we take charge for justice. We want that leader who will come and conquer the empire. Recently, I read an online post that I hadn't any clue that the events that happened this week were coming, and, and it struck me as odd and a little bit uncomfortable. It was a post that talked about how Jesus told us to take up arms. The verse they were referencing is Luke 22, verse 36, that says, Then he said to them, But now, whoever has a wallet must take it, and likewise a bag. And those who don't own a sword must sell their clothes and buy one. When we look at Scripture, the context is everything. Prior to this verse, Jesus had just explained to them that he had said, no longer do I say an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. No longer do I want you to go out in, and, and take no bag with you and, and simply go as you are and be messengers of peace because things have changed. Now you need to have a wallet with you. You need to have a bag with you with some supplies and you need to have a sword. And after Jesus said this, he took them out into the garden uh, to pray in the Mount of Olives. They were in Jerusalem at the end of Jesus' ministry, and he knew that being in Jerusalem was a great risk because there was conflict with the Roman Empire. He knew what people were saying about him, and he knew that there was the possibility of aggression toward his disciples. But the question is, did Jesus intend to incite a riot or a fight with the Roman Empire? The Mount of Olives gives us an answer. If we continue in Luke 22, it says, When those around him recognized what was about to happen, this is the soldiers from the Roman Empire and representatives of the religious leaders who were there, the Lord said, they said to the Lord, Shall we take up our swords? Shall we fight with our swords? And one of them, which other Gospels report was Peter, struck the high priest's servant with his sword and cut off his ear. And Jesus shouted at them, Stop! No more of this! And he touched the slave's ear and he healed the man. If Jesus had wanted a violent confrontation this would have been the moment. Which leads us to have to think that there's a difference between carrying a sword to protect yourself against aggression and carrying a sword to be the aggressor. We can find nowhere in the Gospels that says that Jesus condoned aggression towards other people, even when there is injustice. Another verse that is another section of scripture used to support the idea of aggression is Jesus turning over the tables and the, with the money changers at the temple. It was a violent act. No doubt it did scare some people. But were people intentionally injured? Did Jesus go in assuming he was going to try and go after the religious leaders in the temple? Did he even go into the temple? It was a very important message that Jesus had to bring about what it means to serve God. And serving God does not mean taking advantage of the poor and those in society who have the least in order for them to be able to practice their faith. A very different circumstance. So to claim that Jesus wants us to rise up with arms and act violently towards other people is a false rhetoric. The false rhetoric is what brought us to this place in our nation in the first place, isn't it? When we think about rhetoric, we have to remember that rhetoric is actually an art form, and it's designed to persuade people to act or believe a particular way. With that definition, a sermon is rhetoric. 
But false rhetoric is a weapon that persuades people with deception and lies. And we could all, every American, say there's been more than enough of that. There's been far too much of that in our political discourse. And not just from one political party. Deception and lies. Jesus knew all about that. It was claims of blasphemy by the religious leaders that enraged Herod. It was claims that Jesus was plotting sedition against the Roman Empire that got the attention of Pontius Pilate. It was false rhetoric that put Jesus on the cross. There's so much we could say about that. We could have a long conversation about what happened to Jesus that week. We are living in a very contentious time in our nation, and part of that contention belongs to the Christian church. Words that we speak, teachings that we teach, have contributed to and inflamed where we are today. We do bear a responsibility. And I am thankful for the Christian leaders of all denominations who are speaking out. That gives me hope. But my greater hope is that we will all speak out when we can with a message that supports nonviolence, especially when there is injustice. Saving our nation from corruption through violence and death is not the way of Christ. Many things were revealed to us on Wednesday, not the least of which is the need to speak out against sinful behavior. And so I join the voices of Christians who condemn the violent actions of the mob that stormed the Capitol. Wednesday revealed the need for transformation and healing in our nation, and especially in the Christian church. So may we, as members of the body of Christ, pray for and practice peaceful ways of speaking truth to power. This week we have seen how the power of words can destroy. But it's important for us to remember that words can also bring healthy, powerful transformation. Originally I had planned to talk about the Epiphany stars and the opportunity to experience the Holy Spirit speaking to us through a simple word that we are given on a star. Instead, I'm going to share this short story with you. In 2018, when Mitch and I were in New Jersey, we had also begun the practice of giving star words to our congregation. And so that year, my word was discernment. I began 2018 praying for the gift of discernment, looking for where God was leading and speaking to me. I kept the word on my desk where I could see it daily and stop and pray for God to reveal understanding. And within a few months, Mitch and I were beginning conversations with Grace Covenant. Discernment became the word of the day, every day. And through the process of conversation and prayer, we felt that this was indeed where God was leading us. That star placed where I could be reminded to listen for God's leading was certainly transforming in my life. And I give thanks to God for the gift of discernment and the opportunity to serve as one of your pastors. It has certainly been a challenging time since our arrival. Who could have imagined a pandemic? But even greater, it has been a time of blessing. And know that you are one of them. I hope that as you get your star word, whether you come today to drive through and get a star in person, or whether you contact the church office and Patrick sends you one in the mail, I hope that your star word will be transforming for you this year. And together, may we pause, pray, discern, and work together to transform the division and brokenness in our country. May it be so. Amen.
As always, we have this moment in our worship when we invite you to bring your gifts and to share them for the good of the congregation so that we might do God's work in the world. As we have been worshiping online, we just want to remind you that you can always get, donate online, go to our website, or you can send your donations in. But know that what comes to us is received with great gratitude, that we might be able to continue to be a community that teaches, that learns together, that gathers, equips, and sends into the world. As we come to our moment of prayer, I invite you to enter this moment with me, with a spirit of openness, with a desire to hear God speaking to us. And so let us pray. Holy God, we live in a nation that is living with dismay, with division, with struggle that has risen to the level of aggression and violence. We are listening, O oh God, for your voice. For we know that you have been called into this moment, whether it's by those who were part of the insurrection or those who are watching. All of us are seeking you, O oh Lord. And so we pray that you speak to us and that we listen, that we turn to your word and we listen for your Holy Spirit to guide us and lead us and show us what it means to be your disciples in a time like this. We pray for those who are so filled with anger and passion that they were motivated to storm the Capitol building. They are our brothers and sisters, our siblings in Christ. We pray that they might find pathways to healing and peace, and that we might be able to come together as your people, working to be that light to the nations that the day of epiphany is to call us to. Most holy God, we pray for our first responders and all of those who are in harm's way, whether they be the police, the military, our medical persons who are in hospitals that are overwhelmed by COVID cases, all of those who put their lives at risk daily for the common good. We remember them and give thanks for their service. We pray for your Christian church, O oh Christ. You came to open the doors to all people so that all might come to know God and know the power of salvation and the well-being of the kingdom of God. And we have failed to be your children. We have chosen to be divided amongst ourselves. We fight each other. We condemn each other. Holy God, help us to get ourselves together and to be something that not is about nation first but about serving you. Help us to be your church, faithful to the teachings of Christ, empowering and equipping all to share light and love so that the poor have what they need, so that the blind may see, so those who are imprisoned may find liberation. Help us to remember our work, O oh God. And we pray for our congregation. Our congregation that prays also for the world following the events of this week. Our congregation that is filled with struggles and blessings. We pray prayers of thanksgiving for the successful surgery and continued healing of Connie Richards' grandson, Jeffrey. We pray prayers of celebration for the birthdays of Mitch's sister, Terry Trigger, and his mom, Shirley Carlson, and our daughter, Kate Dufford. 
We offer prayers of joy for Rosemary Gibson's successful heart surgery and thanks for the prayers of so many people who have remembered her. For we are a community that loves and cares for one another. Congratulations to Nicole Beecher, who is starting a new nursing position in Phoenix. We pray for, for well-being and for all that she is done doing, and, and we are grateful that she is willing to take this en endeavor in her life. Holy God, you know what we need far better than we do. And so above all things, we pray that your will be done in earth, as it is in heaven. Amen. I've heard about this baby boy who's come to earth to bring us joy, and I want to sing this song to you. It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift, with every breath I'm singing hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. a pandemic and an insurrection happening at the same time. 
we are living in a difficult time for sure. And so as you go to out into the world, I pray for peace for you and comfort. I pray that you stay safe. For our officials are continuing to say that the coming weeks may potentially be the worst of the pandemic. I pray that as we look at the world that we are living in, that we all remember to pause and open our hearts, take time to pray and remember that God is with us. God will guide us. Remember that you have a community that will comfort you and walk with you through this. One of the gifts of this time has been the technology to be able to gather together for Bible studies and meetings and groups, giving us the opportunity to share and support one another and comfort one another. We will continue to do that. I pray that you think about what it means to be a Christian in our nation today and what it is that we need to do to stand for Christ. Because some of these uprisings are closer than we may think. Our sister church, South Broadland Presbyterian Church, has been experiencing vandalism and attempted arson because they put a Black Lives Matter banner on their building. That's really close to home. I want to stand with them and support them and do what I can to help them. I hope you do too. We stand together as the body of Christ. And as we do so, know that the Lord will bless you and keep you. The Lord will make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Amen. We send you love and prayers for peace until next week. Bye, everybody. Bye.